Hello everyone, I am Anna, here live from London. You're watching English Like a Native and today we are doing our English pronunciation. As I said, I'm live from London, that means what we're doing here is British English. However, whether you're learning American English or British English, it's all English and so Good pronunciation practice is helpful for everybody who is learning English as a second language. So say hello, tell me where you're watching from and I'll give you a little bit of a shout out. While you're doing that, I'll just let you know that all week this week I have been doing a 10 minute pronunciation class each day, concentrating specifically on long vowels. Now these are 10 minute sessions and I will cover the vowel that we're covering today in 10 minutes, but then I will revise all the other long vowels that we've seen this week. And that was all the long vowels in the English language. So, are you ready to stick with me? Ask me a few questions at the end. If you have any specific words or phrases that you'd like to hear in a British English accent, then hold them to the end and when I open it up for suggestions, then let me know, fire away. If you are joining me for the very first time, then please do press that big red subscribe button and the bell notification button so you don't miss me in future. And if you are here and you've been here before, you know how much I like a thumb, so do hit that like button. All right, so let's get going. Today, we're doing the long vowel E. E. The phonetic symbol is this. So if you see this, like a small I with a double dot, then it's representing E, E. Okay, and this is present in words such as we, we, you and I, we, we. It's also present in words such as three, she, and be. Now, you might think this is a really easy vowel. It's really easy. Why are you teaching us this? Because most of my students need correcting on this. When you have this in a sentence, what I hear more often than not is this long vowel shortened. So I hear we instead of we. I hear we. I hear three, she, and be. And it has to be long. I always say smile into this one. It's a smiley, happy vowel. We, three, she. B, so it's smiley, smiley and long. While I'm here, I'm also gonna say a quick hello to my patrons. Hi patrons, <laughs> I'm here again for the second time today and uh, hopefully you guys are joining me too. Okay, so if the I is followed by two triangles in IPA, um, how would that be pronounced? Exactly as it is now, Harrison, E, E, so if it's a small i with the little triangles, the double dots, e, okay. Um, hi in Spain, hello. <laughs> Lots of you from all over the world, but that's the one that's pinged out to me there. So hola, como estas? Let's try our first sentence, shall we? So we have he, and see I've highlighted the sound in purple for you. So wherever it appears, it's highlighted in purple. We have he had to see if she would believe him. She had to see if he, mm, he had to see if she would believe him. He had to see if she would believe him. And just so you can see my mouth doing that one. He had, make sure that you don't constrict those H's. We don't want he had or he had. We want nice breathy, he had. He had to see if she, sh 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 she, would believe him. And that's another H, him. She had, to, he had to see if she would believe him. Let's bring that up so you can see it. He had to see if she would believe him. Then the next one, this is a boy's name. It's the name for a boy, Lee. It's not short for anything, this is just the name, Lee. Lee told me that he did a dirty deed. For those of you who don't know, a dirty deed is something, a, a bad action, a naughty action. Normally, 
a dirty deed in the UK means to ha- cheat on your partner. So to have an affair or to have sex with somebody who is not your partner when you're in a committed relationship. So if you're married and you have sex with someone other than your husband or wife, then you are doing a dirty deed. That's a phrase that we use, the dirty deed. So Lee told me that he did a dirty deed. Lee told me that he did a dirty deed. Naughty Lee. Okay, then we have Felix. This is another name for a man. Or it's also for a cat, (laughs) or any animal really, I guess. But there's a cat food brand here in the UK which has a character called Felix, the cat Felix. So we generally associate Felix with the name of a cat. And the sentence is, Felix cleaned the sheets for me. Felix cleaned the sheets for me. Now it's very important that you give this the full length of vowel. We don't want a short I here because otherwise it sounds like a swear word. Shits, shits. We don't want that. We want sheets, sheets. Felix cleaned the sheets for me. Felix cleaned the sheets for me. Okay, good. So, um, Felix means lucky in Latin. Does it really? I didn't know that. That makes sense now. Lucky the cat, Felix the cat. Ah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, Tommy, that doesn't work. Your sentence doesn't work, I'm afraid. Uh, Hello, everyone joining me. Hello, hello, hello. Hello in Colombia. Hello in Brazil, Mexico. Lovely. Fabulous. Okay, let's carry on. We are nearly at 10 minutes. Must get through it. Oh no, where are, where are we? Okay, she had seen... No, has he seen the sleet? Has he seen the sleet? Do you know what this word means? This is a type of weather. It's basically... It's like wet snow. So when snow is, when it's not quite cold enough for snow, but it's a little bit icy, so sleet. It's a little bit icy, it's wet, sleet, and it comes down from the sky, sleet. So has he seen the sleet? Hopefully this time of year nobody is seeing sleet. It was a treat to visit Baker Street. Baker Street is a place in London. There may be other places in the world that have a street called Baker Street, but there's a very famous street in London called Baker Street. So it was a treat to visit Baker Street. A treat to visit Baker Street. Oh, I'll turn this off so we can see the whole page. There we go. And it was it was a great feat to achieve. It was a great feat to achieve. Notice this word sounds exactly the same as this word, feet and feet, feet, feet. So the feet at the end of my legs and a feet spelt like this means an, an act of bravery. Um, so when you, like if I climb a mountain, my climbing the mountain is a great feat. If I win a gold medal against all odds, if I was... If, if everyone thought I was going to lose and I win the gold medal, then that's a great feat to achieve something that in, involves endurance or strength or bravery. So it was a great feat to achieve. It was a great feat to achieve. So there you have it. Nice and easy. We, three, she, be. He had to see if she would believe him. Lee told me that he did a dirty deed. Felix cleaned the sheets for me. Oh, wow. Okay, bless you. Thank you, guys. I've just seen that we've got two super chats have come through. One from Julia. Thank you very much, Julia. And one from Strongwit, who are also my patrons. Thank you, guys. I always appreciate your support. And um, as you know, 
as um, anyone who supports this channel with Super Chats, you will be getting the notes for this lesson. But lucky for you, not just for this lesson, because we've reached the end of the week, you'll get the whole week's worth of long vowel notes. So you're going to get all of this. Okay, so you'll get the er uh vowel, the u uh vowel, the ah uh vowel, the o uh vowel, and today's e vowel. So thank you very much, guys. That's very much appreciated. You guys are awesome. Okay, so, and oh, at the end, at the end, we just have help me. Oh, that should be purple, shouldn't it? Help me to reach more people by clicking like, subscribe, and share. So yes, I don't ask for much, guys, but if you can help me to reach many different people around the world, then that would be great. All you have to do is click the like button, maybe drop a comment, definitely subscribe, and if you can, if you can share, then that would be awesome. Because the whole point of this channel is to help everybody to learn English and hopefully to help people to speak more fluently and to be more confident in their English speaking and communicating. And that's all I want. But without you, it's, it's a waste of my time. <laughs> if I was just here talking to nobody, then, that, then people would think I was mad. So if you can help me to reach as many people as possible, I would be eternally grateful. So I did say that on this lesson in particular, I would go over all the other vowels briefly that we've done this week, all the long vowels, and then I'll open it up to questions. So if you do have any pronunciation issues that you want me to help you with, um, think of the words and the phrases now, and in a moment I'm going to open it up to questions. All right? Oh, goodness me, another super chat through from Diego. Thank you so much. Is it Diego or Diego? It's a TH, but you're, it's a name, so I'm not sure. Is it Diego? Da Rocha. Thank you guys, that's, that's really kind. Um, if you have sent through a super chat and you do want the notes sent over to you, then all you have to do, if you haven't sent me an email here, drop me your email address. So send me your email, you can email me on englishlikeanative at gmail.com, but do only email me if you've sent a super chat. I don't want, if everybody emails me, then I won't be able to, my, my inbox will be so full and I won't be able to do anything. Um, but thank you very much, that's very much appreciated. Okay, so let's have a look through the previous sounds. So we did have, remember these are the phonetic symbols. This is uh, uh. Remember I said this is like a letterbox sound? Flat, flat tongue, uh, uh. My mouth is like a letterbox, uh. <laughs> and we have this in words such as her and were and work. We were at her workplace. We were at her workplace. Cool? Okay, so that's the er uh sound. And there's lots of practice sentences there that we've been through already. If you missed those lessons, by the way, you can just go back. They're always saved on this channel. So you can just go back and, and re-watch them. They're only 10 minutes long, so that should be okay. This one is ooh. Nice rounded lips, ooh, and we don't want to taper too much, so maybe a little taper, but not a changing vowel. So we have ooh, ooh, present in words such as you, who, blue, the color, and to, you, who, blue, to. Why are you too blue? Hmm? Sometimes we use the word blue, the colour, to mean a, a sad mood. So if you're feeling sad, you're feeling blue. Cool. Um, one of you has asked, what is this super chat for? Um, Ariane, so a super chat is a way of giving a tip or a donation to, towards the channel to help the channel to grow. I usually use it for things like investing in, um, like I need a microphone, for example. At the moment, I use this little hands-free kit, but 
At some point, I would like to get a better microphone for streaming and making the sound better. At some point, I need to get a better Wi-Fi. So um, any donations go towards helping me to save for that. Um, lighting, all that kind of stuff. So Super Chats help to grow the channel and to make the content better. And you can do it by hitting the little dollar sign, which is next to the emoji sign. Um, and in return, of course, you get the notes sent to you and you get a shout out. Also, your comment sticks to the top and it's, it highlights so that you can get your comment seen and responded to if you really want to. Okay, um, Mask says, you look red. Been up to much? Um, actually, it's because the sea, the sea, the sun has been out and I was out this morning teaching my lesson in the garden for an hour and that really made me catch the sun. You can see it burnt on my chest. Um, okay, so let's carry on. So we have the ooh sound we just covered. The next long vowel was ah, remember this one? Long vowel, mouth wide, flat tongue, ah, ah. Not forward, ah, but back, ah, ah. Present in words such as car, ah, like are you, and after, after. Car, ah, after. Okay? Just going to jump over to my patron Skype group here. Um, what are you saying? Oh gosh, what's going on here? Ah, da, 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 da. And I've got some problems with the reception. I wonder if it's on my end. Oh dear. I hope you can join us, Andreas. Hi, Anna. I've, I'm going to have an exam on pronunciation by reading poetry by Roald Dahl. It's very difficult. So if you have some time, I'd like to ask for your help. Would this be possible to make a video of this poem reading? Sure, why not? Yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that for you. Why not? I'll help you out with that. Um, I will try to do it as soon as possible. When do you need it for? When do you need it for? Let me know and I'll, um, I'll get back to you. Okay, Anna, is there a way to connect directly with you, for instance, on Skype video chat? Um, yes, you can get in touch with me and do private lessons. They're available. All the links to my um, websites are in the description of this video. So um, BritishEnglishPro.com is one of my websites, or English Like a Native, and there you'll be able to see where... Um, we go to the shop and you'll find everything that's available for you guys. Also, there's other options like becoming a gold member or a patron, which gives you different types of levels of access. Um, Ariane, thank you so much, sweetheart. You've, you've sent me a um, super chat. Thank you so much. That's very much appreciated. Uh, if you drop me an email, guys, if you sent me a super chat, drop me an email and I will send these notes over to you. Okay? Thank you so much. That's, that is marvellous. I love you guys, you're so supportive. I feel like it's a little family that we have here, all looking after each other. Okay, so the next sound after R that we looked at was a very difficult sound, or. I have a lot of students struggle with this. Um, so or, or, present in words like more, for, and daughter. More for daughter. And just to check the shape of this, it's a big space inside the mouth, like a marble is in your mouth, or it makes the tongue pull down as well. So the tongue is very flat and almost concave, like you've got something on your tongue. Or, or, and the sound is here at the back of the throat. Or, or, and notice the lips don't move. So we don't want oh, oh, or anything like that, just straight. Or, more for daughter. Good. All right. Um, uh, Ariane, Ariane, here is your super chat. You are a very good teacher. Thank you, darling. That's very sweet. Thank you very much. That's very, very kind. Um, okay, we're going to do the last one. So the last one is what we did today, which is just E, which is the smiley vowel. E, we, me, she, he, be. Three. Okay? So I won't bore you by going through that anymore. Alrighty, so that's the five long vowels. So next week when I do the daily pronunciation, we will look at something else. Maybe some consonants for a change. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how we feel. 
Um, alrighty, so I'm now open to uh, taking your questions. Um, obviously, there's a lot of you commenting at the moment, so if I don't see your comment, please don't take it personally. I'm not ignoring you. It's just trying to find comments that I can quickly respond to. Um, if you are here and you're not a subscriber, then please do press the subscribe button. And if you haven't yet, um, show me a thumb. Please show me a thumb. Only the once. If you do it twice, then it, it unthumbs. So only one thumb. But uh, I, I do love a thumb. So <laughs> please do show me. Um, okay, so my patrons are asking for diphthongs next time. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, we'll do that. Next week, diphthongs. Oh, it's going to be a difficult week. Are you sure you're ready for that? I'm sure you are. Okay, so next week will be diphthongs. I will put a schedule on the Facebook page and on the Instagram page. I'll probably make the schedule on Saturday or Sunday, so look out for it. The links to my social media platforms are in... Not very good at teaching pronunciation when I can't speak. They are in the description box below. And uh, because I messed up, I showed the little poo. This is what I got from YouTube yesterday. Isn't that cool? I got one of these too. Ah, love it, pooey. Love it, pooey. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> what are you guys saying? Lots of you are asking me about... Um, okay, so the best thing to do here is ask me for pronunciation help, okay? So um, one of you asking me about jewellery. 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 Um... How do you pronounce the word world? This is the er uh vowel, the letterbox. Er, uh, wer, world. And you've got that dark L. World, world. Good. In fact, what I might do, um, just to help everyone see the words that I'm pronouncing for you, is just create a little on screen page here. Um, so, world, world. What else do you want, guys? Um, hello, the Skype group. So the Skype group is just for patrons, just in case you're wondering. And that's one of the patron perks. If you're a patron, you get to go on the Skype group, and the Skype group gets extra, extra love and attention. Um, please pronounce my... I, I don't know that word. I'm sorry. I don't, it's not English, so I, I'm sorry. I can't help you with that one. Um... Roru, Roru has asked for entrepreneur. Is that the word you're after? You spelt it incorrectly. Let me just get the correct spelling for it. Entrepreneur. Let me show you. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. Oh, oh, on, entrepreneur. 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 It is a tricky one. <laughs> it is a tricky one. Does S sound, does the S sound become a sh when it appears before a Y? Like, as you, as you. No, it becomes a Z sound. So the S regularly sounds like a Z, depending on what's following it, um, or what it's after. As you, as you, it becomes a Z in this case. Um, I know as much, no. As you, how do you put as you into a sentence? As you quite rightly said, as you said, as you told me, as you. There you go. So it's not an SH, it's a Z. Do you know anything about the month of Ramadan? I know it's about um, you, you fast for uh, most of the day, um, but I don't know much more about it. Keep thinking I should do some videos about these things. Um, but if you're if you're doing Ramadan, if if you are if that's part of your religion and you're following it, then good luck. I will try not to talk about food uh, for the next <coughs> thirty days. <laughs> try and help you out. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. Um, what else do you want help with, guys? So, do 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 do. What is the correct pronunciation of, this is a good one, Lucy, Lucy honey. What is the correct pronunciation of these two words? Let me show you. Either and neither. 
So in America, this American English, these are either and neither with a long e. Either, neither. In British English, it's an I diphthong. Either, neither. I just remember I am British. Therefore, I say either. I am British. I say either and neither. Either, neither. But you will hear many English natives, British natives, saying either or neither as well. It kind of they change it because we have a lot of American influences over here. All right, hope that answers your question. Um, I'm following many channels about English, but I have to say yours is the most helpful one, both for your pre recorded videos and your live lessons. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for that kind message. Um, Khaled wants phrasal verbs. Um, I think phrasal verbs are better to do in pre recorded videos. I already have done some, and I will do some more soon, I promise. Um, what else do we have? Hello, teacher. I have to go shopping now. I'm going to miss the rest. Oh, dear. Well, hopefully you can catch up later. Um, doo -doo -da -da, la -ba -ba, boo -ba -ba. Oh, it's Friday night. Bit of a sing-song coming on. Since when did you become French? I thought it was pronounced Z. No, um, Z is how you pronounce a Z in Britain. And in America, the letter is pronounced as a Z. Let me show you. So this letter, if you're doing the alphabet or spelling something out, in America is Z. In British English, Z. Z. There you go. Um, how do you pronounce? Oh, good word. Radwan. Good word has suggested this one. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic 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 I'm feeling very enthusiastic right now are you feeling enthusiastic I hope so uh, what else do we have um, you can explain it some other time but I've got a question about when to use I am going to and when I am go I am going to go um, like I'm going to take a shower or I'm gonna go take a shower going to go take a shower to be honest I'm not I'm not certain that I'm gonna go take a shower we do use that regularly but I'm not certain that that's correct grammar I'm not I am going to go take so you wouldn't say that correct correct grammar would be I'm going to go to take a shower but that's it's superfluous it's far too many words you don't need all those words I am going to take a shower is all you need. I am going to take a shower. Any other words are not necessary. We do sometimes say, I'm going to go take a shower, but it's not grammatically correct. I'm not a complete genius when it comes to grammar. I tell you all the time, natives don't know the grammar rules very well. I might be wrong, but... I don't think I am, but if I am wrong and you're an English teacher and you know grammar inside out, back to front, and, and I'm wrong, then tell me. But I'm sure that I'm going, I'm going to go take a shower. I don't think that's right. But we do say it often. It means the same thing. So don't worry too much about the differences. Anna, what's your favorite book? Ooh, um, ooh, that's interesting. Um, the Time Traveler's Wife, I loved. Lord of the Rings trilogy, I loved reading that one. Um, I like any books that make me cry or laugh out loud. I never know what to say to those questions. It's hard. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Can you do um, a lesson on phonetics? I mean, yeah. Would you Would you find it interesting? Um, will you make a video with Lucy, as in English with Lucy? Uh, I already have made two video, four videos with Lucy. You just have to look back on my channel to find them. So it's quite a while ago now. Can you take classes on the Cockney accent? I have done two videos on the Cockney accent, so you need to look back and see what I've done previously. Okay? Uh, da, 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 da. What else do we have? Any more pronunciation from you guys? What would be the proper... Ep, 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 what is that word? How, you mean, how would you call someone from Manchester? 
I don't, sorry, I don't know that word that you used. Uh, would the term be Mancunian? Yes, Harrison. So you call someone a Mancunian or Manc for short. Are you a Manc? But safest to say Mancunian. Uh, oh, please answer this. Grammar is important for fluency. Is grammar important for fluency? If you're asking a question, make sure you put a question mark. Otherwise, I don't know if you're making a statement or if you're actually asking something. Um, is grammar important for fluency? Yes, of course. It's important that you know how to structure a sentence. But is it important that you know all the rules? No. I'm fluent and I don't know most of the rules. Off the t if you ask me rules now without me checking, I don't know them. But subconsciously, I know them. It's, it's something that you learn through, through doing, through feeling. It's just a different way of learning. I don't think it's important to know all the rules and all the, all the intricacies of grammar rules. But I say this all the time and sometimes people don't like it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Anna, what are you going to do in your next, on your next bank holiday Monday? So this weekend is a bank holiday in the UK, which means that everybody gets um, an extra day off at the weekend. However, I, t I don't tend to have time off. I tend to work over the weekends. Um, and particularly this weekend, I'm working Saturday, Sunday and Monday. And so um, I will be working is the answer to that question. But thanks for asking. Um, oh, gosh, lots of comments coming through. Um, da, 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 da. How do you pronounce vegetable, veg, vegetables, vegetables, vegetables? Oh, let me check whether it's been shortened. Um, vegetables. Vegetables. Mm, veg, vegetable. 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 It's a funny one, isn't it? Vegetable. There, have you got that? Vegetable. I'm a vegetarian, so I eat lots of vegetables. Uh, Harrison, what does the phrase in the offering mean? Um, uh, in what context? I'm guessing in the offering means it's, it's under offer? Like uh, in a house? So if someone's planning to buy a house and they've made an offer, it's in the offering. I'm not sure, you have to give me the context. Um, I'm very excellent in all things in English, but I'm not very good at speaking, can you help me? H are you following my Instagram page? Every day I'm releasing videos on pronunciation to help you. Obviously I have these lessons as well. So, so there you go. Um, Drake, Drake's word says the English hate the Spanish speakers, question mark, question mark, question mark, absolutely not, absolutely not, um, I, me and all my friends, everybody I know loves the Spanish speakers, um, in fact, in fact, I don't know anybody who dislikes anyone who speaks any other language, um, yeah, I don't know where you would have got that from or why you'd ask that question, but no, we love Spanish speakers. <laughs> um, okay, carry on. Um, Ria, y you've asked me something in a foreign language. I, I can't answer that because I don't read that language. I'm sorry. Um, ba -ba -ba. I actually learned to speak English in an American accent, but how can I start learning my British accent? Just keep watching the videos and find films and audio books, perhaps, with English native speakers. Just listening, lots of listening. Um, okay, so we have a pronunciation request here. I'm not going to stay for too much longer because I do have to teach um, a private student very soon. But we have um, consh conscious, conch is that conscious or conscience? I can never remember the difference between the two. Oh, so conscience. Conscience, conscience, conscience. Have you got that? Conscience. Um, do you know another language? A little bit of Spanish, but not much else. Okay, oh gosh, so many, so many questions. All right, guys, I'm going to take one or two more and then I'm going to wrap up. Anything from my patrons? Anything you guys have to say, want to ask? 
Um, uh, what is it on the cards? What does on the cards mean? If someone says that something is on the cards, it means there is that something is due to happen in the future. It's something that is intended for the future. So um, if I have been dating somebody for three years and perhaps there are plans to get married, then you'd then you would say maybe maybe there's a baby on the cards or maybe marriage is on the cards. I think it probably originates from tarot card readers, fortune tellers who would use tarot cards to tell the future and they would say, ooh, you have this on the cards, I think. Um, so if something's on the cards, it's predicted. It's assumed for the future. Um, so nice weather is on the cards for this weekend, I could say. Does that help? Is there a difference between Cambridge and Oxford accents? Well, you could say there is a difference between the accents of every town, every small region. There are subtle differences. Um, but in general, I'm guessing what you would hear is just a standard English accent. Okay. All right. I think it's time to wrap up. Um, uh, okay. I'll take this last one. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Garnia? Garnia says, can you tell me what means, what does it mean, or what does, and then the phrase mean, what does out and about mean? What does out and about mean? If you are out and about, it means you're outside of the house and you're doing things about town. So to be out and about is to be out in the town or to be out in the city. It's just to be out of the home and to be moving around. So if I go shopping for clothes, you could say, oh, I'm out and about at the moment. Yes, you're out and you're available. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I am going to wrap up. Um, thank you so much to all of you who sent me a super chat. Um, honestly, it means so much to me and I am more than happy to send you the notes if you just drop me a message um, either Yes, just drop me a message. Drop me a message um, via email. My email can be found in the about page or it is englishlikeanative at gmail.com. Please don't email me, those of you who haven't sent a super chat, um, because I honestly, I get so many emails every day, people just saying, hello, hi, teach me English. And it, all it does, it just blocks up my email inbox and, and it means that I miss important business emails. So please don't send an email um, unless it's because you sent me a super chat and you want the notes. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Do remember to press the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. And I would really appreciate a like and a share if you haven't done so already. I will be here again tomorrow, I think in the morning. Um, has anyone got the schedule close to hand? Uh, around 11, I think? No, no, I... No, I don't know what time I'm live tomorrow. I've got the notes written somewhere. It's on Facebook and it's on Instagram. <laughs> but it'll be some point. Actually, it'll be on my it'll be on my diary. Hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. Live stream 11 a.m. There we go. So I'll be live streaming around 11 a.m. I'm not quite sure exactly what I'm going to live stream on, but I will figure something out and it will be fun. Um, I w probably won't do grammar. Not on a Saturday morning. But please join me tomorrow at 11 o'clock.